Okay, so let's look at the airflow architecture briefly. Um, airflow um, contains a number of components and the services that are essential to airflow are its web server, scheduler, um, the concept of workers comes in when you are using a particular type of uh, executor and we'll look into that. Uh, meta database and this is uh, very important because Airflow writes uh, all of its inf information to this database and uh, the executor. So let's look at how this all looks like. So uh, to start with there is a meta database which is uh, a relational database uh, both uh, Postgres or MySQL uh, would do. Um, it comes with, uh, by default, it comes with a SQLite database, but uh, that's like a, mm, it's not scalable and it's only good for getting you up and running in your local environment. So if you are uh, thinking of deploying Airflow in production, don't use that. Um, and uh, probably you might want to switch uh, either to Postgres or MySQL or any other relational database can also work if you already have a let's say SQL server you can use that now uh, this database contains all the information about uh, about uh, the tasks uh, and the pipeline or a DAG so um, a, ta a task let's say if I want to query this go inside this database and query what are my top 10 tasks that are taking the maximum amount of time? I can just write a SQL query and get that kind of information. It stores if, you are, if I am creating any variables uh, that are through Airflow, created through Airflow, they, that will be stored in this database as well. Uh, so uh, database is uh, pretty important uh, as uh, it uh, stores a lot of uh, things like users, um, if you have an authentication enabled, uh, all of these information in this database. Now, um, Airflow web server is uh, pretty straightforward. It's, uh, uh, it's a Flask application and uh, it uh, needs to run on a machine uh, where it can talk to the meta database. So, if uh, through this web server, if through, through the UI you are creating a user variable or a DAG uh, that way uh, once you create it it kind of this information goes into the database from the UI. Now scheduler is a very important because um, a scheduler is the one that decides uh, how and when the tasks are getting executed so basically it uh, re goes into the configuration file and see looks for the DAG directory uh, and uh, once it finds it, it uh, uh, takes the you know, default arguments or the, uh, or the settings for each DAG and then starts executing the tasks. So uh, this is scheduler is the one that decides uh, uh, what all DAGs are there what are tasks are there inside the DAG, when they should be executed depend, based on the configuration that's defined uh, in the code for that DAG. Uh, it, uh, scheduler is the one that goes and reads everything. So if you are changing your DAG, if your uh, scheduler is already up and if your web server is already up and you are changing something in your DAG definition, you might want to restart your scheduler so that it can go again and uh, take all the settings from the DAG. Now the concept of workers comes in when you are using a salary executor. Um, by, uh, so, so there are uh, multiple executors. If you are thinking of going completely distributed computing, then uh, the salary is the recommended engine for it. And uh, that's how the salary executor comes into uh, picture. So um, the other executors that are there are sequential executors. The sequential executor will only execute things in sequence. So there it does not do any parallel processing. It uh, only 
it's only good for your local environment to hear again thinking of uh, thinking about production deployment then um then either go with a local salary or any other executor but a sequential executor now local executor is something um, that uses uh, python's multi processing module and that's how it executes tasks in parallel um it, uh, the only trade off between local and salary executor is um in local executor you are actually executing in a single machine and you are only doing parallel processing of this task the scheduler and workers are tightly coupled so if you mm, are doing any maintenance on your scheduler or if you restart your scheduler your workers will get started as well which is not the case with the salary executor in salary executor the way you implement this is through the task queue and um, to create that task queue it's either done using rabbit mq or redis if it's a redis then it's another database so um, scheduler talks to this task queue and that's how uh, the task get assigned to the workers so mm, in a in a pipeline you may have five tasks execute in parallel so uh, once the scheduler knows that that's how those the workers will be assigned and there is a lot more to it you know your concurrency your how many tasks can run in parallel for that pipeline and we'll look into that but that's how your salary executor looks like and um, as i have said before if you are planning on scaling out um to multiple machines then uh, the salary executor uh, can uh, help you achieve that the other executors are task executor um so again you can uh, use task to scale out um you have um you have to specify task executor in your uh, in your code base and then in your in your code itself you have to use task um to uh, actually use the task executor uh if you already have a mesos cluster the mesos executor can also work for you and then the kubernetes uh, executor that's kind of uh, new with airflow 1.10 and uh, that's uh, again used with the uh, containerizing technologies uh and uh, scaling out with kubernetes